The sun set low over the sleepy town of Maplewood, casting a warm orange glow over the streets. Jared Reynolds adjusted the collar of his jacket as he walked down the familiar path leading to Emily's apartment, a soft smile playing on his lips. For a town as quiet as Maplewood, life had suddenly taken on a vibrant hue ever since he met her. Emily had burst into his world like a summer breeze, unexpected, refreshing, and full of life. She had a way of making everything seem brighter. From the way she absent-mindedly twirled her hair when she was deep in thought to the infectious laugh that could turn the darkest mood into something bearable, she was unlike anyone Jared had ever met. It had been three months since their first encounter, and it still felt like a dream. He had been sitting at a local cafe, nursing his coffee, when she had walked in, eyes scanning the room as if looking for someone. Jared hadn't noticed her at first, too lost in the book he was reading, but when her hand brushed against his table and she accidentally knocked over his cup, everything changed. Oh my god, I'm so sorry, she had exclaimed, her eyes wide with embarrassment. Jared chuckled, more amused than upset. No harm done, he had replied, grabbing a napkin to clean up the spill. That was the moment. A clumsy accident, a shared laugh, and soon they were talking like old friends. Emily had a way of drawing people in, and Jared wasn't immune to her charm. Over the weeks that followed, they grew closer. Late-night phone calls, shared walks through the park, and countless hours spent in quiet conversation made Jared feel as though he'd found something real, something that could last. But there was always something lingering behind Emily's smile, a shadow that flickered in her eyes when she thought he wasn't looking. She never spoke much about her past, and Jared didn't push. Everyone had secrets, he reasoned. What mattered was the present, the time they shared now. But that would change soon enough. The first time Jared heard Luke's name, it had been in passing. Emily had been distracted one evening, her hands shaking slightly as she tried to focus on the dinner they were cooking together. Jared noticed her tense shoulders, the way her smile didn't quite reach her eyes, and asked if something was wrong. It's nothing, she had muttered, her voice unsteady. Then, after a pause, she added, just someone from my past. Jared had let it go. But that was before Luke showed up at her door. The night Luke appeared, the air outside was heavy with humidity, pressing in like the weight of unspoken words. Jared was sitting on the couch, his legs stretched out, flipping through channels while Emily cleaned up from dinner. It was a typical evening, one of many they'd spent together over the last few months. But there was an undercurrent in the room, a tension Jared couldn't quite place. Emily was quieter than usual, her movement stiff as she wiped down the kitchen counter. She hadn't touched her food. Jared noticed but didn't say anything. They'd had days like this before, days when she seemed to withdraw into herself. He had learned to give her space when she needed it, though it always left him feeling helpless. The knock on the door shattered the quiet. Three sharp raps. Emily froze, her hand clutching the dishcloth in midair. Jared glanced over, confusion etched on his face. Are you expecting someone? He asked, getting up from the couch. Emily didn't answer. Her face had drained of color, her lips parted slightly as if she couldn't believe what she was hearing. Jared watched her, the uncomfortable feeling growing in his gut. Whoever was at the door, Emily wasn't happy about it. Before Jared could ask again, there was another knock, louder this time. Emily's eyes flicked toward the door, then back to Jared. It's him, she whispered, her voice barely audible. Who? Jared's voice was tight with concern. She didn't respond. Instead, she took a step back, her face tightening with fear as the door creaked open. Jared stepped toward it instinctively, his body blocking Emily from view. Standing in the doorway was a man Jared had never seen before. He was tall, with broad shoulders and a face that seemed to carry years of hardened anger. His eyes were dark and calculating, scanning Jared with a kind of disdain that made his skin crawl. Emily, the man said, his voice low and steady, ignoring Jared altogether. We need to talk. Jared didn't like his tone. He didn't like the way this guy just strolled in as if he had every right to be there. I think you should leave, 
Jared said, stepping forward. Luke's gaze shifted to Jared for the first time, his lips curling into a smug smile. And who are you? The new boyfriend? The way he said it made Jared's blood boil. The smugness, the arrogance, it was like he knew something Jared didn't, and it was infuriating. But Jared kept his cool, even though his hands balled into fists at his sides. I said, you should leave, Jared repeated, his voice firmer this time. Luke took a step forward, ignoring him completely as he looked over Jared's shoulder at Emily. You didn't think I'd just disappear, did you? His voice was sharp, a mix of anger and mockery. We have unfinished business. Emily stayed silent, her back pressed against the kitchen counter, her eyes wide with fear. Jared had never seen her like this, so small, so vulnerable. Something was very wrong. She's not interested in whatever you've got to say, Jared snapped, his patience wearing thin. You need to go. Luke's gaze flicked back to Jared, and he laughed, a dark, bitter sound. This doesn't concern you, he said, his voice lowering to a dangerous tone. This is between me and Emily. Jared wasn't about to back down. I'm making it my concern. Luke's smile faded. His eyes hardened, and for a moment, Jared thought he might take a swing at him. But instead, Luke's voice dropped even lower, filled with venom. You have no idea what she's capable of, he hissed, his words hanging in the air like a threat. But you'll find out soon enough. With that, Luke turned on his heel and walked out, slamming the door behind him. The silence that followed was suffocating. Jared turned to Emily, his heart racing. Who the hell was that? Emily didn't answer right away. Her hands were trembling, and she quickly crossed her arms, hugging herself tightly. He's someone I used to know, she said finally, her voice small and distant. Someone from before. Before what? Jared pressed, his mind spinning with questions. He could still feel the tension Luke had left behind, like a dark cloud hanging over them. Emily, what's going on? She shook her head, not meeting his eyes. It's complicated. I deserve to know, Jared said softly, stepping closer. He clearly thinks he has some claim on you. He doesn't, Emily snapped, her sudden anger startling him. She softened immediately, guilt flashing across her face. He doesn't anymore, she added, more quietly. But Luke, he's not someone you just get rid of. Jared stared at her, frustration and worry gnawing at him. Then why didn't you tell me about him before? You could have said something. Emily's eyes finally met his, and there was something there, something dark and desperate. Because I wanted to forget, she whispered. I wanted to leave that part of my life behind. Jared felt a knot tighten in his chest. He wanted to believe her, to trust her, but there were too many questions left unanswered. And the look in her eyes made him realize there was more to this story than she was letting on. The tension from Luke's visit clung to the apartment like an unwelcome guest. Jared barely slept that night, his mind racing with thoughts of the confrontation. Emily had been quiet since Luke left, retreating into herself. She'd barely spoken a word, and when she finally fell asleep, Jared lay awake, staring at the ceiling, trying to make sense of it all. What had Luke meant by his parting words? You have no idea what she's capable of. The phrase echoed in Jared's mind, unsettling him. He trusted Emily, he loved her, but Luke's presence had shaken him. The way Emily had reacted, the fear in her eyes, it didn't add up. In the early hours of the morning, Jared finally drifted off, but it was a restless sleep, filled with fragments of nightmares and Luke's mocking face. When he woke up, the apartment was eerily quiet. Emily was gone. Jared sat up, a wave of panic washing over him. He called out her name, but there was no answer. Rushing to the window, he saw that her car was still parked outside. Confusion gnawed at him. Where could she have gone? His phone buzzed on the nightstand. Jared grabbed it, his heart pounding as he saw a series of missed calls from an unknown number. Then, a text message came through. Luke is dead. Police are looking for you. 
Jared stared at the screen, disbelief flooding his veins. Luke was dead. His mind raced, trying to piece together what had happened. He quickly dressed and made his way to the door, but before he could leave, the sound of approaching sirens stopped him in his tracks. Seconds later, there was a knock on the door. The crime scene was nothing like Jared could have imagined. Maplewood, with its quaint, picturesque streets, was not a place where people were found murdered in alleys. But there, not far from Emily's apartment, Luke had been discovered, stabbed to death. The alleyway was dark and grim, with old graffiti on the walls and discarded bottles littering the ground. It wasn't the kind of place Jared would ever expect to see connected to his life. The police questioned Jared relentlessly. They had witnesses, neighbors who had seen the confrontation between Jared and Luke the previous evening. There was physical evidence too, a broken bottle with Jared's fingerprints on it found near the scene of the murder. I didn't do this, Jared kept saying, his voice hoarse from exhaustion and panic. But the detectives were skeptical. From their perspective, it all fit too perfectly. An argument. A dead man. Fingerprints. And a motive, jealousy, protecting his girlfriend from a dangerous ex. Emily hadn't been seen since that morning, and Jared's worry for her only grew. Where was she? Why had she left without saying anything? The more he thought about it, the more uneasy he became. As the police continued to press Jared with questions, his mind kept wandering back to Emily. Where could she have gone? She had been acting so strange the past few days, ever since Luke's sudden appearance. And now, with Luke dead and the police convinced Jared was involved, her absence was more than just concerning, it was terrifying. Jared could still see the look on Emily's face when Luke had shown up at the door. The fear, the tension, the way her body had gone rigid when she saw him. It was clear that whatever had happened between them in the past had left a deep scar on Emily, but she had never told Jared the full story. And now, with Luke dead, Jared couldn't shake the feeling that she was somehow at the center of it all. The police had found Jared's fingerprints on the broken bottle near Luke's body, but Jared knew he hadn't been anywhere near that alley. The bottle must have been taken from the apartment. Jared's mind raced as he thought about the timeline. Emily had been alone in the apartment for hours before he woke up. Could she have done something? The thought made him sick, but he couldn't ignore the gnawing doubt creeping into his mind. I didn't kill him, Jared repeated to the detective sitting across from him in the cramped interrogation room. His voice was tired, but there was a determined edge to it. I don't know how my fingerprints ended up on that bottle, but I wasn't there. The detective, a grizzled man in his late forties, leaned back in his chair, studying Jared with narrowed eyes. You had a fight with him, didn't you? Outside your apartment. Witnesses heard raised voices. And then, hours later, he turns up dead. You understand how that looks, right? I didn't kill him, Jared said again, his frustration growing. Yes, we had words, but I didn't follow him. I don't even know where he went after he left. The detective flipped through his notes. Your girlfriend, Emily, hasn't been seen since this morning. You two were living together, right? You know where she is? Jared shook his head, the knot of anxiety in his chest tightening. No. She was gone when I woke up. I don't know where she went. I'm worried about her. The detective raised an eyebrow. You're worried about her, but you didn't report her missing. Why is that? I thought. I don't know, maybe she needed some space. I didn't want to panic. The detective closed his notebook with a soft thud, the sound echoing ominously in the room. We'll be looking for her. But if you remember anything else, now's the time to tell us. Jared clenched his jaw. There was nothing more to tell. Nothing made sense. After what felt like hours, they finally let him go, but not without a stern warning to stay in town. As he walked out of the police station, the weight of the situation pressed down on him like a physical force. Luke was dead. Emily was missing. And the police suspected him of murder. Jared couldn't go home, not yet. 
The apartment felt too empty without Emily, and he couldn't bear the thought of sitting there, waiting for her to return, or for the police to show up again. Instead, he drove aimlessly through the quiet streets, his mind spinning with unanswered questions. He needed to understand what had happened between Emily and Luke. He needed to know why she had been so terrified of him, and why she had kept so much of her past hidden from him. After an hour of driving, he pulled into a diner on the outskirts of town. It was the kind of place where no one asked questions, where you could sit for hours and nursing a cup of coffee without being bothered. Jared slid into a booth in the back corner, his head in his hands. What had Emily been hiding? Luke had said something cryptic before he left, something about Jared not knowing what she was capable of. But what did that mean? Was it just a manipulation tactic, or was there some truth to his words? As Jared stared blankly at the cup of coffee in front of him, memories of the past few months with Emily began to surface. She had always been guarded about her past, but Jared had assumed it was because of something painful, perhaps a bad breakup, or a family issue. He had never pushed her to talk about it. But now, he realized he should have asked more questions. He should have known more about her before they moved in together. There had been little signs, he realized now. The way she would tense up when her phone rang, sometimes glancing at the caller ID and silencing it without answering. The way she would change the subject whenever the conversation drifted toward her past relationships. The nights when she would wake up in a cold sweat, her face pale and her breathing shallow, refusing to talk about her nightmares. What if Luke wasn't just some ex-boyfriend with unresolved issues? What if there was something darker between them? Jared's thoughts were interrupted by the sound of his phone buzzing in his pocket. He pulled it out, his heart skipping a beat when he saw Emily's name on the screen. Meet me at the cabin. Don't tell anyone. I'll explain everything. Jared's stomach tightened. The cabin. Emily had mentioned it once before, an old family cabin up in the woods, about an hour's drive from town. She had said it was a place she used to go to clear her head, to get away from everything. His mind raced with questions. Why was she there? And why did she want him to come alone? But there was no time to waste. Jared paid for his coffee and rushed out of the diner, his heart pounding as he made his way to the cabin. The drive to the cabin felt endless. The winding roads through the dense forest only added to the tension building inside Jared. By the time he reached the secluded cabin, the sun was beginning to set, casting long shadows across the gravel driveway. Jared parked the car and got out, scanning the area. The cabin was small and rustic, surrounded by tall trees that made it feel even more isolated. The front door was slightly ajar, a soft glow of light coming from inside. His heart raced as he approached the door, his footsteps crunching on the gravel. He pushed the door open and stepped inside, his eyes quickly adjusting to the dim interior. Emily was sitting on the couch, her face pale and drawn, her eyes filled with a mixture of fear and guilt. She looked up at Jared as he entered, and for a moment, they just stared at each other, the weight of everything unsaid hanging heavy between them. I'm sorry, she whispered, her voice cracking. I'm so sorry, Jared. Jared's throat tightened. Emily, what happened? Why did you leave? The police, they think I killed Luke. Emily flinched at the mention of Luke's name. She stood up, wrapping her arms around herself as if trying to shield herself from the truth. I didn't mean for it to happen like this, she said, her voice trembling. But I didn't have a choice. He wouldn't leave me alone. Jared took a step closer, his heart pounding in his chest. Emily, what are you talking about? Tears welled up in her eyes, and she wiped them away with the back of her hand. I killed him, she said, her voice barely above a whisper. I killed Luke. Jared's mind went blank for a moment, the words not fully registering. He stared at her, disbelief flooding his senses. What? Emily's shoulders shook as she broke down her sobs filling the small cabin. I didn't mean to, but he wouldn't stop. He kept coming after me, threatening to tell everyone about, about what I did when we were together. He was going to ruin everything, Jared. 
Jared's breath caught in his throat. What did you do? Emily sank down onto the couch, her hands shaking. It was before I met you. I was desperate, and Luke, he got me involved in some bad things. Things I'm not proud of. I thought I could leave it all behind, but when he showed up, I knew he wasn't going to let me go. He had leverage over me, and he was going to use it. Jared's heart ached as he watched her crumble under the weight of her guilt. Emily, you should have told me. We could have figured something out. I didn't want you to know, she said, her voice raw with emotion. I didn't want you to see that side of me. I thought I could handle it on my own, but when he came to the apartment, I panicked. I followed him that night. I just wanted to make him stop, but it went too far. Jared felt like the ground was shifting beneath him. Everything he thought he knew about Emily, about their relationship, had been shattered in an instant. What do we do now? Jared asked, his voice barely audible. Emily looked up at him, her eyes filled with desperation. We can't go to the police. If they find out, they'll arrest me, and everything will be over. You have to help me, Jared. Please. Jared's mind was spinning, torn between his love for Emily and the gravity of what she had done. Could he really help her cover this up? Could he live with that kind of secret? Jared stood frozen in the center of the small cabin, his heart pounding in his chest. Emily's confession hung in the air between them, heavier than the silence that followed. His mind raced, trying to process the gravity of what she had just admitted. She had killed Luke, a man from her past who had tormented her, and now she was begging him for help. Emily. Jared finally said, his voice hoarse. We can't just, hide this. Emily's eyes pleaded with him. She stood up, stepping closer, her hands trembling as she reached for his. Jared, I didn't mean to kill him. I swear. But if the police find out, they'll think it was premeditated. They won't believe me. They'll think it was revenge or something worse. Jared swallowed hard, his throat dry. But the evidence, Emily. The police already suspect me because of the bottle with my fingerprints. What if they find out the truth? How do we? We'll figure it out, Emily interrupted, her grip tightening on his hands. We can get rid of the evidence, make it look like an accident. We'll find a way. Jared's mind reeled. Could they really cover something like this up? What would that mean for the rest of their lives, carrying the weight of this secret? He looked into Emily's eyes, seeing the fear and desperation etched on her face. She was terrified, of the truth coming out, of losing everything. But as much as he loved her, as much as he wanted to protect her, the reality of what she had done was like a shadow looming over them. Could he really help her get away with murder? And more importantly, what would that do to him? Emily. He said, his voice cracking. I don't know if I can do this. Tears filled her eyes again, and she let go of his hands, stepping back. Please, Jared. You're all I have left. If you don't help me, I'll go to jail. My life will be over. I didn't mean for any of this to happen, but I can't undo it now. I just. I need you. The desperation in her voice tore at his heart. He had never seen her so vulnerable, so broken. But he knew the stakes were too high. This wasn't something that could be undone with a few quick decisions. It was a choice that would follow them both for the rest of their lives. After what felt like hours of agonizing silence, Jared finally nodded, though his stomach churned at the thought of what he was agreeing to. Okay, he said quietly. But we have to be smart about this. We need to figure out exactly what we're going to do. No mistakes. Emily's shoulders sagged with relief, and she let out a shaky breath. Thank you, she whispered, her voice breaking. Thank you, Jared. He didn't say anything in response. His mind was already racing with the logistics of how they were going to pull this off. They would need to clean up any evidence that could tie Emily to the crime, get rid of the bottle that had his fingerprints on it, and somehow make Luke's death look like an accident. Tell me everything, Jared said his voice steely. Every detail about what happened last night. 
I need to know exactly what we're dealing with. Emily nodded, sitting back down on the couch. She looked pale, her hands still shaking as she began to recount the events of the night before. I followed him after he left our apartment, she said, her voice shaky. He was angry, and I knew he wouldn't leave me alone until I did something. I waited until he was alone, and I confronted him. I begged him to stop, to leave us alone, but he just, he just kept taunting me. He said he was going to tell you everything, ruin my life, destroy us. Jared clenched his fists at his sides, fighting back a surge of anger at the thought of Luke tormenting Emily like that. But he stayed quiet, letting her continue. I panicked, she said, her voice cracking. I didn't think. I grabbed the bottle from the trash near the alley and swung it at him. I just wanted to scare him, make him stop. But I hit him harder than I meant to, and he fell. There was so much blood. Her voice trailed off, and she buried her face in her hands, sobbing. Jared felt sick to his stomach, but he forced himself to stay calm. They had to focus. Okay, he said, his voice steady despite the storm of emotions raging inside him. We need to get rid of that bottle. Did you leave anything else behind? Anything that could trace back to you? Emily shook her head. No. I don't think so. I wiped my prints off the bottle before I left, but I don't know if I missed anything. Jared stood up, pacing the small cabin. We'll have to go back and make sure. If there's anything else, we need to clean it up. Emily nodded, her tear-streaked face filled with dread. But what about you? The police already think you're involved. How do we make them stop looking at you? Jared paused, considering. We'll have to make it look like an accident or a random attack. Something that makes it clear it wasn't personal. If we can do that, maybe they'll stop looking at me and move on. He didn't say it out loud, but deep down, he knew that no matter how well they covered their tracks, suspicion would always follow them. The truth had a way of coming to light, no matter how hard people tried to bury it. Later that night, they returned to the scene of the crime. The alley was eerily quiet, the streetlights casting long shadows over the pavement. Jared's nerves were on edge as they approached the spot where Luke had fallen. The broken bottle was still there, along with a few other pieces of trash scattered along the alley. Jared crouched down, carefully picking up the pieces of glass and wiping them clean before placing them in a plastic bag. His heart raced as he scanned the area, making sure they hadn't missed anything that could trace back to them. Emily stood nearby, watching him with wide, fearful eyes. Jared could tell she was on the verge of breaking down again, but he couldn't afford to let her crumble just yet. They had to finish this. Once they had cleaned up the area as best they could, they quickly left, returning to the cabin in silence. Jared's mind was racing with the consequences of what they had just done, but there was no turning back now. They were both in too deep. The following days were a blur of tension and paranoia. The police continued their investigation, and Jared could feel their eyes on him, watching his every move. He did his best to act normal, to go about his daily life as if nothing had changed, but inside, the weight of the secret was suffocating. Emily had gone into hiding, staying at the cabin while Jared kept up appearances in town. They communicated through brief phone calls, each conversation filled with fear and uncertainty. But as the days dragged on, the pressure became too much. Jared couldn't sleep, couldn't think straight. Every time he saw a police car drive by, his heart would race, convinced they were coming to arrest him. And then, one night, there was a knock at his door. Jared's heart stopped as he opened the door to find Detective Collins standing on his porch, his expression grim. We need to talk, the detective said, his voice low. Jared's stomach dropped. Inside, Detective Collins sat across from Jared, his gaze sharp and unrelenting. We've been looking into Luke's death, and some new information has come to light, Collins said, his voice calm but firm. Jared's palms were sweaty, and he struggled to keep his composure. What kind of information? The detective leaned forward, his eyes locking onto Jared's. We've received a tip that suggests Luke's death wasn't an accident. 
In fact, we're starting to suspect foul play. And right now, you're still our primary suspect. Jared's heart raced, but he forced himself to remain calm. I already told you, I didn't kill him. Collins studied him for a moment before speaking again. You didn't, huh? Then maybe you can explain why we found evidence that someone tampered with the crime scene. It looks like someone cleaned up after the fact, trying to cover their tracks. Jared's blood ran cold. They knew. Before he could respond, Collins continued. We've also been looking into your girlfriend, Emily. She's been missing since the day Luke was found dead. We have reason to believe she was involved in some, questionable activities with Luke in the past. Jared's stomach twisted. They were closing in on the truth. You might want to think carefully about what you say next, Collins said, his voice hardening. Because if you're covering for her, this whole thing could blow up in your face. Jared's mind raced. He had to make a choice. Lie and protect Emily, or tell the truth and risk losing her forever. The detective's gaze pierced through him, waiting for an answer. Jared's heart pounded in his chest as Detective Collins's words echoed in his mind, if you're covering for her, this whole thing could blow up in your face. He knew he was at a crossroads. If he continued to protect Emily, the weight of their secret could crush them both. But if he told the truth, he could lose her forever, she could go to prison, and their love would be destroyed by betrayal. The thought of losing her made his chest tighten, but the truth, gnawing at the edges of his conscience, was undeniable. Jared took a deep breath, his decision crystallizing. He couldn't keep living this lie. He couldn't let them both drown in it. I. Jared's voice cracked, and he cleared his throat. I didn't kill Luke. But I know who did. Detective Collins's eyes sharpened, his pen poised over his notebook. Go on. Jared felt the walls closing in on him, but he pushed forward, his voice trembling. It was Emily. She killed him. For a moment, there was only silence. Collins leaned back in his chair, his eyes narrowing in suspicion. And why would she do that? Because, because Luke was blackmailing her, Jared said, the words tumbling out faster now that he had started. He was threatening to tell me things about her past, things she didn't want anyone to know. She didn't mean to kill him, but she panicked. It was an accident. The detective scribbled in his notebook, his expression unreadable. An accident, huh? That's why you helped her cover it up. Jared nodded, feeling a cold sweat break out across his forehead. Yes. She was scared, and I... I didn't know what else to do. I was trying to protect her. Collins looked at him for a long moment, his gaze weighing Jared's words. You realize what this means, don't you? You're both in serious trouble now. Jared nodded again, the weight of his confession crushing down on him. I know. But I couldn't keep lying. I couldn't live with it. Collins stood up, motioning for Jared to follow. Come with me. We'll have to bring Emily in. Jared stood, his legs weak beneath him. His whole world was falling apart, but there was a strange sense of relief in finally telling the truth. As much as it hurt, as much as it terrified him, he knew this was the right thing to do. The lie had been eating away at him, and now, finally, he had stopped running from the truth. Later that night, Jared sat in the cold, sterile waiting room of the police station. His head hung low, his mind replaying the events of the past week over and over. Emily was being questioned in the room next door, and he could hear the muffled voices through the thin walls. He had betrayed her. He had broken the promise he made to protect her, and now, everything was unraveling. But deep down, he knew this was the only way. Living with the lie had been destroying them both. After what felt like an eternity, the door to the waiting room opened, and Detective Collins stepped in. He looked at Jared with a solemn expression. Emily's confessed, Collins said. She corroborated your story. We're placing her under arrest for manslaughter, but given the circumstances, the DA may offer a plea deal. Jared felt a wave of nausea wash over him. He had hoped, somehow, that things wouldn't go this far. 
that there would be some way to salvage what was left of their lives. Collins continued, his voice softer now. You did the right thing by coming forward, Jared. But I won't lie to you, this is going to be hard. For both of you. Jared nodded numbly, unable to find the words. He knew there was no going back now. Days turned into weeks as Jared watched Emily's legal battle unfold. She had been charged with manslaughter, and though the evidence supported her claim that it was an accident, the fact that they had covered it up made everything more complicated. The media caught wind of the story, sensationalizing every detail of Emily's past with Luke and the crime she had committed. Jared visited her whenever he could, but each time, he could see the growing distance between them. Emily had become a shadow of the woman he once knew, her spirit broken by the weight of her guilt and the impending consequences of her actions. I'm sorry, she whispered one day during a visit, her voice barely audible through the thick glass separating them. I never meant for any of this to happen. Jared placed his hand against the glass, his throat tight with emotion. I know, Emily. I know. But the truth was, he wasn't sure if he could ever fully forgive her. The love they had once shared had been poisoned by the secrets they had kept, and no matter how much he wanted to believe they could survive this, he knew deep down that some wounds never healed. Months later, after Emily was sentenced to five years in prison for involuntary manslaughter, Jared stood outside the courthouse, watching as she was led away in handcuffs. She looked back at him one last time, her eyes filled with sorrow and regret. I love you, she mouthed silently, tears streaming down her face. Jared's heart ached as he mouthed the words back, even though he wasn't sure if they were still true. The woman he had fallen in love with was gone, replaced by someone he barely recognized. And though part of him would always love her, he knew that the life they had dreamed of together was over. As Emily disappeared into the prison van, Jared turned and walked away, his shoulders heavy with the weight of everything that had happened. He didn't know what the future held, but for the first time in a long while, he felt a strange sense of clarity. The truth had set them both free, though not in the way he had hoped. And as painful as it was, Jared knew that sometimes, love wasn't enough to save people from themselves. Jared took a deep breath, knowing that, even now, the hardest part of moving on was learning how to live with the lies we carry.